Hey friend, it's me Vasco with a quick announcement. We at the Scrum Master Toolbox podcast are organizing this year's Scrum Master Summit. For tickets and details on the summit, check out the URL bit.ly forward slash SM Summit 22. All one word S-M-S-U-M-M-I-T 22. And now on to the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Success Thursday. This week, we have with us Daniel Lutz. Hi, Daniel. Welcome back. Hi, Vasco. So, Daniel, on Thursdays, we talk about success and, of course, being Scrum Masters as we are. One of the biggest tools we have in our toolbox to help us reach that success is the retrospective. So we'll start there. What's your favorite retrospective format and why? Yeah, so absolutely agree. Retrospectives are the most powerful tool that we have in also organizing change on the organization level, but also becoming better uh, as a team. And therefore, I don't have one specific retrospective format I really, really prefer. I'm coming from a big organization and we do have different kinds of teams or different kinds of work and a different kinds of pressure on operational daily tasks, for example. So this is why we, we identified over time a very simple, very good retrospective that fits to high demand operational teams the one uh, start stop continue it's very easy to set up i combine it with a want uh, for all method so you all include everyone make sure that everyone even the quiet people in the team uh, get their voice out and uh, this works very well in, in remote setups with a virtual whiteboard it doesn't take a lot of time to prepare, but it still gets um, a lot of topics on out on the table. And even though we should spend more time on them with some of our teams, it's hardly possible. So we said this is a quick, quick and dirty format that works for for teams that don't have too, too much time, but it still gets some some value out of the retrospective. That's one. If we have more time, then I like uh, the sailboard retrospective in combination with the five whys. So getting getting deep uh, onto those. Um, anchors the block the sailboard from from getting into to reaching the objectives and my fellow agile coach uh, loves this one and he he, he used it way more often than i did so thanks marcus but it's very powerful because it's visual and really helps also to think differently about the concept of retrospectives absolutely i like how you put the emphasis on different teams need different types of retrospectives. Um, you, you talked about uh, uh, one aspect, of course, which is the, the lack of time. Uh, if you're an operations team, you're going to have, of course, you're not going to have the flexibility in how you allocate the, the time, or at least not as much flexibility as, as a team that is working on, on product development that has no day-to-day -day delivery pressure, but the pressure will come at some point, but it's not every day. And I think that's a very important aspect for us as Scrum Masters to think. One is, what is what are the topics that the team needs to talk about? So that's, of course, one aspect that helps you also discuss and, and think about what retro would fit. But uh, another one is how familiar they are and also how much time they have to talk about these things, right? The retro for high demand or very busy operations team, I think that's a great idea to really think about what would be a a format to fit these themes. So thank you for sharing that. So now Welcome. we turn our attention to success, right? Like what does it mean and uh, how do we measure it? How do we look at it? So let's start with uh, the first, the definition, Daniel. What does success mean for you as a Scrum Master? For me, succession as a Scrum Master is if my team or the Scrum team has psychological safety. And this is not given when the team starts, usually. Um, so it needs to develop. If really the team is, and I see in a sense that the team is not shying away from controversial discussions, they dare to speak up and say, sorry, I need uh, I did a mistake here. Can someone please help me out? Or um, I don't feel good today. Please, sorry, I got to go. Um, I, I will not be in full throttle today. Those are very, very positive signals. And where I see, okay, this, is, this feels good and I'm successful in my role as a, a scrum master if the team is doing that and having that kind of behavior because it leads to so many other positive effects along the line. This is one. My definition of success would be, does the team have a psychological safety and openness in the team that leads to constructive discussions and constructive conflicts resolutions? 
So obviously, you know, do they admit their mistakes? Do they shy away from controversy? Th- those are clear signs, right? Like if they don't shy away from controversy, they're probably safe to have a conflict. They feel safe. They feel that the conflict is is uh, is okay to have. Of course, it might also be that they are looking for conflict as a, a way to protect themselves, right? So h- how do you, like, do you have like a scorecard or do you have like a list of questions you ask yourself to kind of, kind of, put a level on, on the psychological safety of a team? How, how do you go about deliberately reflecting on the level of psychological safety in the team? And we do we do ask use a lot of scaling. So I, I'm a certified uh, coach. So we, we I learned in my coaching training a lot of different methods and tools. This is very helpful, the scaling. Um, and uh, from a scale from 1 to 10, how, how safe do I feel in the team to uh, raise my voice? How much trust do we have in the team on a scale from one to 10? Are we honest in the team on a scale from one to 10? And uh, we do this regularly, um, maybe as a check-in for retrospectives. And we keep track on that along the time. So we do this, not every retrospective, but regularly, maybe once a month, maybe every two months. And then we see a pattern, like, like a traffic light. And, and we, we do that across the teams. So across many different teams, you can do that. And then you see like a traffic light across all the different teams that you have. If you have many more teams, then you see, okay, where are we green? Where are we red? Where are we uh, amber? And where do we need to act? And is is there a pattern in the team or across the teams that leads to this behavior? And then we need to act on that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I really like that idea of having some questions that you regularly ask because obviously things are not static over time, right? Like you don't just get psychological safety. You have to keep it there, yeah. right? Yeah. And to, to be able to measure this over time, I think that's a, a great tip. Is that something that you guys do like as a matter of uh, process? Like, do you have like, you know, once a month or once a, a quarter, you have that kind of survey in the retro or how do you go about it? I would love to have it regularly. We don't have it as regularly as we would like to have it due to many different other topics, you know, uh, that pop up. But um, that would be my recommendation of, of setting an, setting it up as, as regular format. So it, 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 it's kind of a rhythm that you keep track on. Maybe two every two months, having that uh, part of your retrospective. Um, to, okay, this, this time of year, we do reflect on how are we doing in terms of psychological safety and make it a regular theme in, in one of your retrospectives. I would highly recommend doing that. And we will get back to that after the podcast. Yeah, absolutely. So w- one of the things that uh, just came to mind as you were describing that, so psychological safety, of course, has many different aspects, many different dimensions. So, yeah. And and I was just thinking like it would be a great mix to have that regular check on psychological safety and the five dysfunctions, right? Like mm-hmm. we, we could have that question or that set of questions that we go through because the, the questions help the team members also reflect on their own. And I think that's a very important aspect of the the whole process, right? Like to give people the time to really ask themselves and to think about the topic and and not just necessarily, you know, give a, a smiley because that might be actually, you know, how you do it, right? Like one to 10 or or, or happy, sad or, or angry, smiley or whatever, but to really have that time to know, okay, this, as you said, this time of the year, we reflect on. Exactly, yeah. That is very, very powerful. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that, Daniel. You're welcome. Thank you. Hey, friends. It's Vasco again, now with a bit longer announcement. I'm part of the team that is behind the Global Scrum Master Summit, the conference dedicated to the Scrum Master role. If you're a Scrum Master, the Scrum Master Summit is the place to learn, to share, and of course, to meet new friends. We will have lots of live sessions where you can meet and network with other Scrum Masters from the whole globe. So make sure you check it at bit.ly forward slash SM Summit 22. We have several amazing keynotes and seven tracks that feature people like you and of course, thought leaders sharing their insights, their knowledge, and helping you become an awesome Scrum Master. You can check out all of the details of the summit, including the keynotes announced, the track chairs, and much more at bit.ly forward slash SM Summit 22. That's all one word. That's bit.ly forward slash SM S-U-M-M-I-T and the numeral 22. I'll see you on the conference floor.